Welcome back to Nights and Ghost Beaters. And if you're new to the channel, I am Old Head Gaming. If you want to stay up latest on all horror games, just make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications for all future videos. Now, we have to talk about what everyone else is talking about, of course, and that is Leatherface and Texas Chainsaw Massacre is dropping tomorrow at 10 a.m. And let's be honest, Gun Media has done a masterful job not only just answering everyone's questions, whether it was before or after the tech test of Memorial Day weekend, or just doing interviews, getting stuff out there, doing dev streams. Hell, the promotion has been fantastic. Leatherface even did a run-in last night to help Jeff Jarrett defeat Jeff Hardy at the AEW show. On a minute. But Leatherface! No! Leatherface! What the? Jeff Jarrett said he's going to have Leatherface in his corner. Jeff, get out of there! Oh, oh. oh no, 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 not Karen. Jeff Jarrett, he thought he could control Leatherface. But I want to talk about Leatherface in particular as the face of Texas Chainsaw Massacre, much like Jason was for Friday the 13th. And then this spiritual sequel to F13, Leatherface will be kind of that linchpin for the family that if you don't like to play a character with a little more importance than others, then he might not be the one for you. But I'm gonna break down why Leatherface is, of course, the most important member of the family. Now, first of all, you are the only member that starts in the basement. So, when a game starts out, after you execute whichever victim was not chosen, in the tech test, we just killed Julie over and over and over again. But, she will be playable come tomorrow, so whomever is not chosen and you kill them, which is basically how his environmental takedowns work, you then are a 1v4, which is pretty familiar to most people. Most players have played in a 1v4 tons of time. And you're gonna have two groups of survivors, and these victims will be put into random rooms, so that way you can't just run over and chop them in half, and then they have to escape. Your job is to do two things in the beginning of this match. One, you need to grab some blood. So when you finally have to rejoin the rest of your family, you have a ton to give grandpa and hopefully bump him up a full level. Now, grandpa is an NPC, so he's just going to basically scream whenever he gets to certain levels, and that will then ping wherever the victims are on the map. Two, if you can take out a victim before they get the doors open, it's a huge advantage to the family. Now, your job is to slow them down. If you get a kill, it's great. And the reason why you're so important is the two family members upstairs have a lot of stuff to set up to stop the victims from escaping, whether it's hooking up car batteries to get the back gate set up, or it's starting the generator, or adding locks to doors, or getting grandpa some blood. They have a lot to do that isn't actual head-to-head -head combat like Leatherface has. Leatherface also has the ability to remove obstructions in the basement, which could lead to other kills later in the match or even earlier in the match. Now, remember, at a full chainsaw, you can do an insta-kill, which no one else can do. It's an insta-death. Doesn't matter what kind of health any of the victims have, if they get full chainsaw hit, it's over. Very similar to what you would expect like if you played Dead by Daylight, where if Bubba just kind of chainsaws you, you're insta-downed. He can still, though, do normal M1s to get rid of health and grab blood, and then if they drop the victim, he can do an execution right there, or he can do environmentals, which no one else, at least as far as we know, can do, where he basically uses the hooks that are lying, whether it's the basement or upstairs, to then bamf throw the victim up there and can do the execution very similar to what he does at the start of the match. Number two, your job is to stop the Connie. Let's be honest, there's gonna be a Connie in every fucking group. Why? Because she can pick things at lightning speed. So if you can stop her from getting the gate open super fast, it allows Grandpa to build up. It also stops them from just bum rushing all the exits before your team can get set up. So you are like this initial line of defense. And Connie has to be looked at as the biggest threat. If you can insta-kill Connie before the doors are open, the match is almost over before it even gets started. But 
three, Leatherface can be played two different ways, and it's going to depend on how you build your Leatherface. Now, we haven't seen the full trees yet, but Leatherface can be really, really quiet. Like, he is super stealthy for a big man and can be an M1 monster if that's the way you want to play him if you're not building to be a chainsaw hatch and slash. Like, there's different ways you can play Leatherface, and I played them both, and I've had kills both ways, which is really fun because you can just sneak up on victims and be like, BAMF! done <laughs> it's awesome of course you're gonna if you want to be chainsaw you're gonna have to probably spec into it but there's multiple ways to play leatherface in the basement that is going to be fun whether it's a very insidious type of bite basement bubba that you know from dead by daylight or it's a really more hack and slash bzz, bzz, burr, burr type of leatherface depending on what you want to do now number four the coolest thing about Leatherface is his natural ability to take punishment. He is the biggest of the family. He cannot be knocked off his feet even by Leland's shoulder thrust. He can be stunned a little bit, but it's about a third of the time of everyone else because he doesn't have to get up. He can still be stabbed with a bone piece like everyone else can, but the timing is less. And Leatherface is going to be that character that is going to try to do as much damage as he can downstairs before he gets up to feed Grandpa and try to keep the family in a good position because survivors have some really good abilities as well. Leatherface is kind of that last line of defense before the game really starts. If you look at the game in two phases, Leatherface really controls phase one for the family versus the victims. And then he's a big part of phase two, which is once the initial door opens and everyone's trying to choose their path for escape. Now, number five, if you do not like pressure, he's probably not the one for you. Every other killer, as far as we know, play a more support role. Leatherface is very hands-on as he spawns in the basement. Everyone else is kind of setting up traps, turning on generators, making sure they can't escape through the back gate by turning on the car. You like all those things you do in preparation of Leatherface not getting all the kills in the basement. So if you don't want that initial pressure of trying to heavily influence how the game flows in the beginning, then play a support character. He's probably not for you because if you're a Leatherface who doesn't like to actual pressure or is really bad finding survivors in the beginning, then you're probably not going to enjoy playing him and you're probably going to feel like you're getting a little overwhelmed. I definitely felt like that in the initial tech taste. The first day I played Leatherface four or five times, absolutely hated. I was getting my ass handed to me by Connie's and Leland's and Anna's. And basically, no matter what I was doing, I wasn't getting a real good feel of the basement. I wasn't doing anything to impede them. And it made me really hate playing Leatherface. And it wasn't until about Sunday in the tech test that I started to find my rhythm and be like, man, Leatherface is a lot of fun because now I realize what kind of impact I have on the game. If that's not the weight you want to carry going into a match, then go with one of the other support family members and have a lot of fun. I mean, there's a ton on all of them I can talk about. And I feel like we're going to see plenty of videos going into other family members once the game drops tomorrow. Now, if you have any questions on Leatherface or other family members or victims for that matter or anything you want to know about the game before it drops tomorrow, just drop them in the comments below. As you know, I answer all my comments. As always, thank you for watching and later, mates.